Hey guys, what's up? The iPod Kid here, and today we are back with app review number 103. Uh, I do have four apps for you guys in this review. I'm going to start it off with one that I haven't really gotten a request for, but I'm hoping some of you guys will enjoy, and that is Star Wars Battle for the Hoth. Um, and it's a pretty cool application. It's not really similar to many other Star Wars games I've played before, because what this is going to be is a tower defense game, similar and based around the Star Wars movie plots. Um, really cool thing that I will show you guys later in this review is that the application does come pre-packed with quite a few movie clips uh, to help the plot go along when you're playing the application, which is definitely a nice feature to get some original cutscenes from the actual actors uh, from the original first three movies before they got crappy and were re-released -re to the theaters. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, got some pretty nice features in this application, surprisingly, that aren't seen in regular tower defense games. One which I will show you and talk about soon to come is that you're allowed to build trenches. Uh, cool thing about trenches is, is that will allow you to basically control where the enemies are going to come into you. Uh, which sounds super bad coming to you. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can build and dig trenches so the enemies will have to go around that path. Uh, as you see right there, I just built one and that enemy had to go all the way around so you can kind of control where the enemies are going to flow in from. Uh, you also do have the ability to upgrade each of your towers, very similar to other tower defense games, although you can only upgrade them to level 4 and that's very, very easy to do because each time you upgrade a level, it only costs 5 points. Uh, you do get points by not only defeating enemies at the end of each level, but sometimes the enemies will drop a green coin, or what you just saw right there is more sort of a wrench, and you have to click on that very quickly. The quicker that you hit the wrenches when they're dropped, is the, uh, the more point value it will have, the higher point value it will have. If you wait too long, they will diminish and they will actually go away, which kind of stinks, but it's kind of cool, because usually in uh, tower defense games, you just get points for killing numerous amounts of enemies, and you don't even have to worry about it, but this game you have to actually uh, kind of stay awake a little bit more. You do have the ability also to fast forward the gameplay, however if you do fast forward the gameplay those green coins will also be in faster time so you're going to have to click on them much faster if you want the same higher point value. Uh, it's not too hard when you first start off, clearly this is only the first level, I only want to show you guys a little bit of a taste of the application, uh, but when you do get on, I actually only ended up getting into level 2 and then I personally got bored of it because I have played so many tower defense games in these reviews. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I did think it's a pretty fun tower defense game. And all the ones that I've played so far to date, uh, aside from Bloons Tower Defense, this one's definitely up there. This is definitely a really fun application. That is Star Wars The Battle for the Hoth, or The Battle of Hoth. Uh, definitely go check that one out if you're a Star Wars fan. Make sure you do if you have a tower defense game and you're looking for one. Next app that I have for you is Family Feud. And this is based off of the very popular American TV show, uh, where it's going to be an American game show. Uh, very, very easy concept. What you're going to be doing is ask a question, and after the audience, or the computer in this sense, uh, is taken from a random poll, you're going to have to answer with what you think would be the most common answer. Uh, you're going to be playing against different families or computer opponents, basically, but you do have the option to play multiplayer from the same device if you do want to. Uh, you also That's what I was talking about in the party mode. You also have the ability to change your player by pretty much customizing them with preset players. There's only eight players you can choose from, and I chose this guy on the left, although he kind of looks like a turd. Uh, these are all the families you're going to be playing against, kind of basically our levels. Uh, the farther you get, the more difficult the families will play against you, and in all honesty, this first family is a complete and utter joke. They don't try at all, it seems. They have very, very slow reflexes. Uh, it was only until I got to about Family 8 or Family 9 when I got any competitive play from the other team, uh, which was definitely kind of a flaw because there was no difficulty setting that was really hard enough for me. Anyway, uh, if you don't know what Family Feud is, it's a very, very simple concept. You're going to be asked very basic questions, and you're going to have to be able to give them very basic answers. This is my family that I was given. We're all blonde, apparently, and we're also all albino. Um, and two of us have afros. And this is the family we're playing, two of which are possibly dark skin, two of which are, I don't know, I don't know how that's a family. Anyway, uh, so round one, you start off and you answer the question, or ask the question. Click on the screen, name a fruit not used for juice. Uh, can't think of any. Like, cherry? I think cherries are fruits. Never heard of cherry juice. Crap. Well, I lose. I'm sure I'm neither not a fruit or I'm just being laughed at by thousands of people watching this video. Banana, there is banana juice. If this is if this wins, I oh my god, there is banana juice. So I already lose this one. 
And now it goes to the Andersons family. So I just insulted this family, and of course they already beat me on level one. I have pineapple, orange, banana juice, and I'm going to show it on screen at the end of this application so you can see I'm right. But anyway, that is going to be... <laughs> Hold on. That's going to be Family Feud. Hopefully you guys want to go check that application out if you're a fan of the TV show. If not, uh, I wasn't too amazed by the application. It's well put together if you're a fan of the TV show, but if not, uh, it's nothing to go run out and get if you're not a big fan of it. So that's Family Feud. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Alrighty, guys, and my next app for you in this review is Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart 2. Uh, quite a mouthful to say. This is the sequel to the hit iPhone application previously released Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart and Crash Bandicoot was also a pretty big hit on previous consoles before the uh, PS3 and Xbox 360 and uh, I guess the Wii were released. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty big game. It's kind of similar to Mario Kart if you ever played that game, which if you haven't then I don't know where you've been. Uh, very similar to that in the sense that you collect items to destroy your enemies that you're playing against or racing against. Uh, it does have a cartoony feel to it, and it would have some pretty good controls if the left analog quote-unquote stick would be a little bit better. However, I do want to point out though that for this application you have a ton of game modes. You have about eight different game modes to actually play through, including multiplayer, which is definitely awesome. Uh, the one that I do enjoy playing most would be Cup, and this is what the classic Super Mario uh, Racing Mario Kart thing was, uh, where you have four different kinds of uh, tournaments you get to play against, each with different levels. So, with these four different cups, three levels each, you have 12 levels in the entire application, which are preloaded. Definitely a nice feature. Uh, you also do have the ability to pick through quite a few different characters. I think you have four or five different characters, uh, all of which do have different carts to actually use, which is definitely cool. Uh, don't really matter that much during the game. There's a few different tweaks in there with their skill levels through speed and whatnot and turning, but I haven't been able to feel that much of a difference between any of them. So the point that I was trying to say earlier about the left analog stick being really shaky, uh, you do have two different methods to control your carts. You use the accelerometer, which is the tilt control, which by now most people are already annoyed with with the iPod. It's been out for so long. And two, there's this little thing down here, which is this little uh, quote-unquote analog stick that you could say. Uh, it has to be touched very, very accurately for it to work. If you don't touch it in the right spot, uh, your cart will not only go the wrong way, but you might not even turn in the entire uh, in the entire thing. You, it just might not work for you. Uh, I wish that it was a wider um, pad for you to actually be able to use. Uh, being a touch screen, it's a little bit hard to use touch controls already, and having this very, very small and uh, narrow touch pad for me to control my entire cart with is definitely kind of an insult to the player. It's very difficult to do, and I've had a few problems with it already playing in just the first couple races when I first tried out the application. Uh, the items are pretty cool though. There's those wampa fruits that you can collect, which are the little like apple berries that are floating around that give you speed boosts. Uh, it's very true to the original game on the consoles if you ever played those. If not, it's definitely a fun one to pick up if you're a fan of Mario Kart, like I said earlier. Uh, if you're looking for a more realistic racing game, this is definitely one to steer clear of though. This is a very, very cartoonish arcade feel to it. Uh, similar to Mario Kart, as I've said about ten times. So, uh, I recommend to go pick it up. Uh, if you are a Crash Bandicoot fan from the original consoles. If not, uh, I would probably go for a different uh, racing game. If you're looking for a cartoony one, I've always been a fan of Cro-Mag Rally. That was kind of fun on the iPod and iPhone. And if you're looking for a realistic one, there's a ton of them. There's Need for Speed. There's a bunch of realistic ones out there. So go check those out. Uh, but if you're a big fan of Crash Bandicoot and Nitro Kart, uh, then definitely check this one out. It is pretty true to the original game when I used to play it on the, I think it was on PS1. I had both consoles. Anyway, so that's Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart 2. Quite a long title. Uh, pretty fun game with a few flaws in there, though. I would might add myself. Alright, and my fourth and final app in this review is Super Bad Mitten 2010. Uh, the only reason that I actually went out to go pick up this application is because I have not seen any applications similar to this in the App Store. Volleyball applications, uh, any really good tennis applications, or badminton applications. Nothing really like this uh, type of sport out there yet that I've seen. Um, and they did a pretty okay job with this. Um, however, there are a few problems. One that I've seen the most is it kind of seems like slow gameplay. Uh, when you're originally playing the game, the frame rate kind of just seems to go a little bit stuttery here and there. You do have three game modes, Quick Play, Exhibition, and Tournaments. Uh, I'm just going to go into Quick Play and that will match me up. I am Rachel, an Australian, playing Roger from the UK. Um, I also want to add, like you saw, I did change the difficulty. 
If you play on easy, you will win. They suck on easy, the computer will not move for you. However, I already did say that on uh, Family Feud, and then they ended up beating me because apparently banana juice doesn't exist, which I will show you at the end of this video. Anyway, back to Super Badminton. Uh, top of the screen, you do have the ability to change your D-pad. Um, the only thing that I've seen different, really, is that with this circular blue one, I feel like you have more control. Uh, because it's like a 360 analog stick compared to an 8-way D-pad. And then you have the ability to do two different camera angles. I think this one is by far the easiest because it does show you from an overhead view. Uh, more better chance to see where the actual shuttlecock is going to land. Uh, it is a shuttlecock. If you know anything about badminton, there is the little birdie that goes by. It can be called a birdie, it can be called a shuttle, it can be called a shuttlecock. Yes. So don't laugh. Um, you move around. Obviously, I'm going to serve. You have three different types of hits. This is going to be a low drop shot, a high drop shot to go over them, and then also this is going to be a pretty much a spike. This is going to be a quick shot. So let's just do a normal hit and we'll start it off. And we'll show you where the Batman's going to fall, or why the birdie's going to fall. And I'll try and do a spike here. And I missed. Alright, so now that's on normal, he actually has a chance of beating me because when it was on easy, it was just a just way too boring to try and play. Um, another thing that you do have is uh, you have the ability to tilt. Oh, I thought I should have hit that. You have the ability to tilt your device once the uh, birdie is in the air. Uh, you can tilt it to give it some sort of a leeway. Uh, as you see at the top of the screen, that arrow will go with my tilt uh, because when the birdie is in the air and you tilt, you will direct the birdie, uh, kind of giving it some sort of a spin, I guess you could say. I don't know how to hit that shot. Apparently, I have to jump early. So I'm losing 3 to 1. Thank God it's on normal, because if it was on easy and I was losing, I'd be embarrassed again. So, that's the entire application, pretty much in a nutshell. Very simple concept. If you know anything about badminton, it's a pretty simple game. Uh, they did a pretty alright job with it. If you're a huge fan of it, definitely go pick it up, because it's the only one out in the application store that's worth being notified about. Uh, if you're not, then maybe wait till there's a light version. It's kind of just fun to mess around with because it's a little bit of a different pace, but in all honesty, if you're not a huge diehard fan of it, it's nothing too amazing or too exciting to go out and pick up. So that's what I have for you. I have those four applications. Uh, Star Wars Battle of the Hoth, Family Feud, which I got shown up on, uh, Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart 2, and ba Super Bad Bit in 2010. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed those four applications. Uh, stay tuned if you want to see pineapple, orange, banana juice, and I will talk to you guys later. Have a fantastic day.